Makishi are the spirits of ancestors who are resuscitated for the Mukanda to guide and accompany the initiation of a new generation of boys. Some are ferocious and aggressive, others kind and funny. This is Jenjela, the female spirit, who carries a child on her back. No trace of skin is visible, as this would reveal the humanity of the Makishi. These are not men, but spirits. Maria Shibinda is Patrick's mother. At 73, she's the oldest woman in the village and plays a special role in the Mukanda. They call me Nachifwa, the woman who takes care of the initiates. I am old. I have the right to take the place of their mothers. I am also a friend of the Makishi. I have the right to touch them, to play with them. They don't whip me. They're my friends. <laughs> These women gathering tall grasses to make the thatched roofs and small fences surrounding the homes are the initiates' mothers. They will not see their sons for four months. For Chishika, Eve and the others, the separation is hard. I will miss my child. All those months without him, according to the tradition, we're not allowed to see our children before the final day of the initiation. It's hard, but this is how it must be. I'll miss my son, too. Yes, I'm going to miss him. He will be different after. He won't be my little boy anymore. No, never again. And I'll miss him. Oh, yes, I'll miss him. I already miss him, but I'm happy he's at the Mukanda. Before, he used to be rude sometimes. At the Mukanda, with his instructors, he will have to learn his manners. Yes, there he'll learn to be polite. The initiates, separated from the women by blankets, are better. The wounds have healed, and for the first time in a month, they have left the Mukanda. This is the ceremony of the first bath. The women dance, sing, and throw talcum powder to thank the men who are educating their boys. In payment for their dedication, they offer the men chicken. Katatola races out of the bush at the head of the troop of Makishi. He pushes the women back so that the initiates can remove the blankets covering them and go to the river, where they will be washed.
On the path, the women pretend to want to touch their children, but it is entirely out of the question for a woman to recuperate her boy because, from now on, he is no longer her child. The symbolic attempt by the women to catch their sons is a pretext for a game of cat and mouse between the makishi and the mothers. The game mimics the violence of tearing the sons from the laps of their mothers. Excitement is running high. The path has been cleared. The boys have reached the river. The elders wash the initiates for this first bath, which marks the end of a phase. The cavalcade was reassuring to Chijika, Pauline and the other mothers. There was no bad magic. They're happy. We don't care about the blows we received. We managed to get close to our sons. They are alive and in good health. Do you think they saw us? With all these people, it was hard to recognize them. Yes, they saw us, definitely. And we saw them clearly. I would like to stay near them and play with them always. Yes, you're right. Dance and play with them all the time. <laughs> the initiates are now allowed to enter and leave the Mukanda. They have a bit more freedom. During their isolation, they learn to dance, and the dance bears a strange resemblance to the ways of the Makishi. Every evening, in turn, the mothers prepare the corn and cassava mash, which is the initiate's meal. Old Maria tastes the food first, ritually. I take care of the food before it's taken to the initiates. I have to taste it to make sure it's not poisoned. If it were, it would be my duty to die instead of the initiates. The boys are no longer children, but not yet men. Only Maria, the old Nachifwa, has the right to go near these youngsters during their metamorphosis. <laughs> <laughs> 